This is going to go specifically through elastic collisions, um, but it's always good to start with a discussion between the difference of elastic and inelastic. So fully elastic versus fully inelastic. Now, while the real definition of them has to do with gaining or losing kinetic energy, what we are doing in this class is looking at the two extremes, 100% elastic and 100% inelastic. So the difference between them for a 100% fully elastic collision is that the two objects hit and separate. So in other words, they bounce off each other. A fully 100% inelastic collision is where the two objects hit and they stay together. or stick together. Now that is a very rough definition, but the one that we really need to focus on for this class, just realize that there is more specifics into what is an elastic versus inelastic equation or inelastic collision. Now for both of these types of collisions, momentum is conserved. And so for both of them, the answer is yes. And that is because at that moment of impact, there is a force that is applied to each, and that force relates to that change in momentum. We will then look at that more specifically with each collision separately. So speaking of, let's go into elastic collisions. The best way to talk about what happens in an elastic collision is to look at three specific time frames before the collision happens, the collision itself, and then the after the collision happens. What I'm going to do is look at two objects, and I'm going to make them specific colors to kind of coordinate through as we go through these elastic collisions. So here is a red object and it is going in the direction of right. So it has a certain momentum. And we have a blue object over here. And let's say it is going in the opposite direction. So these two things are headed head on and will collide with each other. At the point of collision, the two objects will hit like so. And when they do, they provide a force on each other. So whenever they hit, there is a force applied. We'll come back to that in just a second. Once they hit, this red object will bounce off. and we'll go off in this direction, and the blue one will go off in this direction. Now, this is just one scenario. I mean, there's lots of different scenarios here where one of them is not moving, where they're both going the same direction, but different speeds, you know, lots of different scenarios, um, different masses. But I'm just drawing one to try to explain how elastic collisions work. So let's look at the red object. The red object, oh, 
is initially, <laughs> sorry about that. There we go. So the red object is initially going to the right. Then after it gets hit, it goes to the left. Well, that is a change in momentum. So the red object goes through a change in momentum. It's not a change in mass because it's still the same object, but it is a change in velocity, which is one of the components in momentum. The blue object is initially going to the left and then after the collision is going to the right. So it also experiences a change in momentum. Well, change in momentum is the definition for impulse. So there is an impulse that happens whenever two objects collide. In the case of the red one, it changes direction. And in case of the blue one, it also changes direction. This impulse happens because a force is applied. Well, the red one applies a force to the blue one that causes it to bounce off and change direction. The blue one applies a force to the red one, again, causing it to bounce off and change direction. Because of Newton's third law, those forces are equal. This is also the reason why momentum is conserved. If the forces are equal and they are in contact, the amount of time they're in contact is the same, which means the same impulse same impulse means one will give a certain amount of momentum to the other, and it will be the same amount. Therefore, momentum is conserved. Now, how are we going to solve these things? Well, we've got two separate objects, then they collide, and then we have two separate objects again. The best way I know of to solve these types of things is in a chart. So we have object one and object two. So object one would be like our red object and object two would be like the blue one. Each one of these before the collision have a certain amount of mass have a velocity, and therefore have a momentum. This dark line here, that is the collision itself. That is where they come in contact, they hit each other, and there is that change in momentum. Therefore, after the collision, there is mass, there is a new velocity, therefore a new momentum. Another way that this also helps with this particular chart is MVP is also the equation for momentum. Mass times velocity equals momentum. Same over here. Mass times velocity equals momentum. So let's see how this works in an example. Let's see, easiest way I think of to start these is to start with MVP, MVP. So let's see, here we go. M, V, P, collision, M, V, P. Then over on this far left side where I have the space, I write the name of the objects. I'm gonna keep using my red and blue to help differentiate the two objects.
the first object we come to is the cue ball. And so I will say cue ball. It has a mass of 0.17. And it is moving at 2 meters per second. This then says it hits the back of a 0.16 kilogram striped ball. So that is our second object. That will be blue. So I'll just say striped. Let's see, 0.16 kilograms is the mass. And it's already moving. So it also has a velocity in the beginning. 0.7. Then it says if after the collision. So there is a key phrase. This means we're now on the right side of this chart. So if after the collision, both objects separate, so elastic, the cue ball is still moving forward at 0.74. So the cue ball is red, and so this 0.74 goes with red the velocity of the red ball. What is the velocity of the stripe ball? So the stripe ball is blue. So our unknown is that velocity. All right, so let's see, what can we do first? Oh, well, we could find the momentum. Mass times velocity equals momentum. So let's see, 0.17 times 2, 0 0.34. Then let's do the strike ball. So 0 0.16 times 0.7 is 0 0.112. All right, um, let's see, on the other side, oh, masses. The cue ball isn't gonna change mass whenever it hits the stripe ball. It's not like the cue ball breaks up into a bunch of pieces or gets like some extra mass attached to it. So that means the mass is still gonna be the same. So 0 0.17, and the stripe ball is also gonna have the same mass of 0 0.16. So let's see, let's go ahead and find that other momentum, right? So 0 0.17 times 0.74, and I'm going to round. So 0 0.126. All right, well, now we're done with what we can do at the moment. What's next? Oh, we did say conservation of momentum, right? So the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after. So let's do that. So 0.34 plus 0.112 is going to give us 0.34. Four, five, two. Well, the total before equals the total after. So that means this number will also be 0.452. Oh, that means we could solve for the momentum of the stripe ball because we know that 0.126 plus this number is going to equal 0.452. So we could do let's see, 0 0.126 plus P equals 0.452. So we could subtract that. And if we do that, 
we get, let's see. Point four five two minus point one two six. That is point three two six. Go. I put in the calculator wrong the first time. Sorry about that. All right, let's see. So now we have that momentum. So I'm going to erase this. So can we solve for the question mark? Well, yes, we can. Because we have the mass times that velocity equals that amount of momentum. Well, we could divide, right? So if we write this out, 1, 6 times V equals 0.326, right? We could divide by the 0.16. And if we do that, we get an answer of 2.04. And so the final answer of this problem is 2.04 meters per second. I know this seems like a lot, but in all honesty, I just really like the chart method because I feel like it is very visual. If you would like to see an alternate way of doing these types of problems, I am pretty sure that um, the one from last year that Mr. Heyer did, so the 2020 Mr. Heyer video, will have it using the equation, the outright equation, and also the one that is labeled as old in the playlist will also have the other alternate way of doing it. So make sure you look at that one too and then pick which method you think would be the best. Let's do another example. All right, let's start with our chart. So we have MVP, collision MVP. Let's see, we have a croquet ball, so that's going to be our red. And let's see, it's 0.50. And it is moving at 1.6 meters per second. It hits another object. Well, it doesn't say what it is, so let's just say other than, right? So the other object has a mass of 2.2. And let's see. Oh, it's at rest. How fast would it be at rest? That would be zero. If after the collision, so there's our key phrase. Now we know we're on the right side. The croquet ball moves back with a velocity of negative one. So the croquet ball is the red, so that'll be negative one. What is the velocity of the other object? All right, well, that's our question mark. So hopefully you're seeing a pattern here between these two examples. Next step, let's solve. So let's start by finding our momentums. 0.5 times 1.6 is, let's see, 0 0.8. And then 2.2 .2 times 0 is 0. We now can find our total momentum. Total momentum is 0 0.8. That goes over here. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, the masses, right? Yep, we're still not going to have a change in mass. So this mass is still going to be 0 0.50. Has a velocity of negative 1, so let's find that momentum. That will be negative 0 0.50. And then the other object has a mass of 2.2, .2, but we need to find that momentum. 
All right. Um, oh, why don't we use the momentums right here, right? We know what the total is. We know how much red is, so we can find blue. So negative 0 0.50 plus P equals 0 0.8. Well, let's see, since it's plus with a negative, why don't we add 0 0.50 on both sides? And that gets rid of it. And that gives us 1.3. Well, now we have the momentum of our other object. That line back. Yeah. So let's solve for the velocity. 2.2 times what gives us 1.3? So 2.2 times V is 1.3. Well, to get V by itself, we would divide by 2.2. And that would give us a velocity of 0. 0.59. And so the final answer for this one would be 0 0.59 meters per second. Now, if we were looking at this one, what this is showing us is that the croquet ball slows down and actually goes backwards, right? So it hits this other object and then bounces backwards. That's why it's negative. The other object starts at zero and it's now moving forward just a little bit. All right, that is it for elastic collisions.